Hello, everyone. Uh, everyone is uh, buzzing on the internet right now. Everybody's talking about Forza Horizon 5, right? How good is the force feedback? How do I get my wheel and pedals working on it? Are there any, you know, hidden events? Does it support VR? It keeps crashing. Please help me fix it. It's the greatest racing game ever. I'm not here to talk about Forza Horizon 5. Uh, there's plenty of videos talking about Forza Horizon 5. If you guys want, I'm sure you could find them. Uh, but one of the criticisms I hear about Forza Horizon 5 and really just a lot of modern racing games is that they lack the career mode of older racing games like Gran Turismo. And no, I'm not talking about Gran Turismo Sport, but Gran Turismo 1 and 2 and Gran Turismo 3 A-Spec. Now, I'm 38 years old, which means that around the time that I was in high school, Gran Turismo 1 and 2 came out. And those games were really sort of amazing at the time. For those of you who have never played retro Gran Turismo games, and I'm sure you could catch up on what they're like if you watch like Jimmy Broadbent, he does like, uh, he, he plays through the career mode, sometimes uh, streaming, but he's doing it on a controller, right? Uh, but they were popular for having this GT mode where you would slowly work your way up from like Sunday cups and commercial car races, starting out with zero cars and zero licenses and having to win races to earn money and uh, earning licenses to unlock more advanced events so that you could slowly work your way up to these faster events like Formula and GT and stuff like that. And this was before, you know, DLC and online play became as prevalent as it is now where, you know, the way to earn faster cars is <laughs> by, you know, using your parents' credit card or your credit card. Uh, so the idea was that back then people who didn't play online would have a challenging single player mode that forced them to work their way up and, and sort of start from from scratch and, and sort of build their way up it, i mean it was really fun you, you would go to like a used car dealership and search for like a, a craigslist civic sir with like a ton of miles on it and it was funny because like you would buy the car and the oil would be really dirty so if you tried to drive it like that sometimes it would backfire and like the rpm would drop a little bit so you would have to take it in to change the oil and changing the oil would give you like 10 or 11 horsepower um because you know up until then the oil was just really bad it, it was it was really you know, like some of this stuff, if you look at it now, it's not very advanced. But back then, you know, this was really impressive. You, you as like, a, you know, back then playing racing games, you didn't think that they could get this realistic. Um, so I felt that, you know, right now it's it's November 24th and that's the 11 year anniversary for Gran Turismo 5. You know, 11 years ago this came out. Can you believe it? Um, so I thought it'd be fun like like to revisit it and see how it holds up. Um, now, it just so happens there's a PS3 emulator for PC that upscales the graphics and supports things like AMD FSR, anti-aliasing, and increasing the texture resolution. But what about steering wheels and pedals, you know? Well, a couple of years ago, uh, the developers of RPCS3 managed to get USB pass-through working. And what that means is you can connect PS3 compatible peripherals directly to your computer and they would be detected by the emulator exactly like they would on a PlayStation 3. And it also supports force feedback. But 10 years ago on a PS3, I mean, we're not talking about high-end hardware. I don't even think the first OSW was out 11 years ago. I mean, when you're talking about Gran Turismo 5, we're talking about 2010. The steering wheel of choice back then was the Logitech G27. Now, obviously, it's not going to provide you with a very modern racing experience. Using a G27 now, I mean, that sounds very, not very 2021 and not very 2020 fun. <laughs> I know, bad joke, but hear me out. What if the force feedback of Gran Turismo 5, the software, was actually not that bad because the software was okay, but it was just held back by the primitive gear-driven technology of its time? You see, force feedback as a signal hasn't really evolved much over the last 10 or 11 years. I mean, if you look at iRacing, it has pretty modern force feedback. It's not as great as Assetto Corsa Competizione or R Factor 2, but you've got rumble strips, you've got tr grip loss, you've got, um, like, you can feel the tire grip getting stronger as you get close to the grip limit. It's, it's a pretty advanced force feedback technology, and it's been around since 2008. So, you know, maybe Gran Turismo 5 has not bad force feedback. It's just too bad that we can't connect a SimiCube 2 to our PC and, you know, maybe find a way to get the PlayStation to use it, isn't it? 
Well, actually, it might be. There's actually a USB adapter sold by Gimmicks, and it allows you to emulate a G27 in PS3 mode, and you can even map the inputs in Windows from button boxes and your steering wheel and your pedals to use non-G27 hardware connected to a PlayStation 3 to play your favorite racing games on a retro console using modern sim racing hardware. Hmm. So on one hand, you have a PlayStation 3 emulator that supports USB pass-through, so you can connect PS3 peripherals to your computer and have them detected in your PlayStation 3. And on the other hand, you have a USB dongle that allows you to connect modern PC steering wheels and pedals and have them be detected as a Logitech G27. Can we mix these together and find a way to play Gran Turismo 5 in 2021 with modern steering wheel and modern pedals? Well, I'm here to find out, and I'm going to teach you how, if I can get it to work. So, let's go drive. So, I got this uh, Xbox controller USB cable that I'm going to use. You can see that, the micro USB port. I'm going to plug that into here. Okay. And then this is going to go to the back of the computer. And then this USB cable that goes out from the Arduino goes into another USB port on your computer. And you'll know that it's working because I already flashed it. So if I go to GimX Launcher, I don't know where it is. Here it is. And if I hit start, if you hear that noise, um, in device manager, G27 racing meal. There it is. Okay, so you'll know that it's there, but let's talk about how you get to that point. So with uh, both the Arduino plugged in and the USB cable plugged into the back of the computer, the, the next thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna flash the firmware. Now this is where things get really, really tricky. Um, I had a lot of trouble getting this to work, but basically you're gonna go here to update firmware. And then over here, you're gonna wanna select EMU G27. Now, what this means is because the adapter comes stock with the G29 firmware, but the G29 is not going to be recognized by the PlayStation 3 emulator. So you're going to want to flash G27 to the GIMX adapter. However, Windows 10 has a constant issue where it doesn't recognize an Arduino board in firmware mode. So what this means is, is that this process is going to fail probably over 20 times until you get it to work. So you're, I'm just gonna go ahead and show you. Right now it's already working for me, but I'm gonna show you how difficult it is to get it to flash. So that if you go through the same thing, don't feel discouraged, just keep at it until you get it to work. So we hit the load button. It says this tool is only compatible with GIMX adapters. If you bought the GIMX adapter on the website, then you're fine, hit okay. Now, when it says plug both sides of the adapter to the computer, we already did that. We have the USB plugged into the back and we have the adapter plugged into the back. So hit OK. Yeah, here we go. It says unplug and replug the USB cable from to the USB port. What this means is unplug the cable, not, not the adapter. Now you see it failed. That, that's going to happen a lot. So what you're going to want to do is the next time you hit load, you hit OK, be ready to unplug the cable. And when that prompt comes up, quickly pull the cable out and then plug it back in, not from the adapter and not from the cable connected to the adapter because it's really hard to get out. So let's try and see if we can get it going. goes and it's flashing and it worked firmware loaded successfully 
Now, uh, this means that the GIMX adapter is going to work as a G27. So let's get it configured and let's take it for a drive in Gran Turismo. But right now you're going to want to open GIMX, the configure, the configuration tool. Let's hit GIMX config. And then let's move this out of the way real quick. Okay, so what you're going to want to do is go to Axis, and you're going to want to do Auto Detect, and then once you do Auto Detect, turn your wheel to the left and right until you get it to be detected. Now once it's detected, go to Axis and choose... Um, actually, wait, no, that's not right. Um, well, we're just going to hit add. I want to say select and access. This should be... Ah, my mistake. <laughs> you have to select G27 PS3 PC. So you select type up there. Now this is detected. You go up here and you select wheel. See that I almost <laughs> I made a mistake. I'm glad you saw that though, so you could see how to do it. Um, so profile one and type G27 PS3, and then yeah, now that you detected it, hit add. So now you've got your steering wheel added. Now the next thing you need to do is map your uh, throttle. So go ahead and hit auto detect. Okay, hoisting filth comes up, and then pick gas add uh, what's going on here fail to calibrate that oh sorry it's because of the zoom um, let's go ahead and let's uh, let's remove that let's try it again okay we're gonna hit add fully press the pedal and then fully release the pedal and then press any key or button Now we're going to do brake. This one's important. Make sure that you calibrate the brake, especially if you're using the hoisting felt sprints because they're uh, pretty. Uh, they have a pretty strong resistance. Okay, just like that, you've got your gas, um, brake, and steering. So now what you're going to want to do is. Um, you're going to go to button and you're going to want to map your buttons so we're just going to do a few necessary buttons so so that was the left shift and i know because i've already done this you're going to want to set this to l1 and then you're going to want to do right shift you're going to set that to r1 Okay, I've got all my controls mapped. I got my GIMX profile made. Let's see if this works. So you can see G27 underscore semicube cube and hit start. You hear that USB ding noise? Let's make sure it's connected. Remember, you're not checking game controllers because the G27 in PlayStation 3 mode is not going to show up as a regular game controller. Go to device manager, scroll down to USB devices, G27 racing wheel. There it is. Okay. Oh, I'm nervous. Oh, I'm nervous. I did test out Gran Turismo 5 using my Xbox controller 
and I did buy a car. It's like, when this prompt comes up, just hit no, because um, this was the only version of RPCS3 that I found that's stable on Gran Turismo 5, so I'm gonna hit no. All right. Now, I did already buy a used car um, using my Xbox controller. I think I set X to the push button on the funky switch. Oh, let's see. Oh, okay, that's a good sign. That's a good sign. All right, so the controls work. So that means at the very least, the buttons are being detected. Now, one thing you're going to want to do is um, after you select a race, if you want to make the controls advanced, uh, Gran Turismo 5, it wouldn't let you change the driving line or any of that stuff from the options. You actually have to do it before you start a race. So let's go to driving options. Let's set that to manual. Driving line off. Traction control off. Okay, I'm nervous, I'm nervous. Hope it works. Oh, throttle's working. We have force feedback. Oh, that's really, that's really rough. That's really rough. <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. oh, that's really rough. That's really rough. Oh. Okay. Ow, ow, ow. I almost hurt my hand. Okay, we, we need it. We need to change the settings. Ow, that, that hurt a lot. We have force feedback though. We have force feedback. Okay, let's see. Let's see if we can make we can make these settings a little more a less destructive. Okay, let's increase the uh, static force reduction. Um, increase the thirty five percent. Oh, that's much better. Okay. This feels much better. I can't believe I'm playing on Forest Park Speedway with a steering wheel and pedals. Isn't that amazing? I can actually feel the rumble strips. Yeah, it's like a da 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 da. You know what? The force feedback actually feels really modern. It doesn't feel very outdated. Brake and gas feels good. Grip feels good. It feels almost like, like a Seto Corsa without any mods. Like that's how the force feedback feels. Definitely the force feedback feels better than uh, than uh, Forza Horizon. Oh, jerk. I could never get Forza Horizon force feedback to feel that good. It always feels very... Uh, like the centering force just doesn't feel weird. It feels weird. Like there's like a dead zone in the center of the steering wheel. No matter what I do, I can't get the dead zone to go away in, for in Forza Horizon. But in this, it like... The centering force feels really good. It feels, yeah, it feels not bad. Man, this is the way that Gran Turismo should be played. This is awesome. Ooh, I won my first race. You definitely don't want to let go of the uh, 
steering wheel in Gran Turismo 5. <laughs> nice. I won my first race. Oh, give me them credits. I want to go buy a Honda Prelude. Well, there you have it. Gran Turismo 5 with a Simu Cube 2 Pro and Hoisingfeld Sprint pedals. I, I like to think that um, this, is, this is the goal for all of us sim racers is to be able to play our childhood uh, classics with the steering wheel and pedals. Um, like I said before, if anyone's interested in figuring out how to do this, I'm gonna leave some tutorials and some notes at the bottom. Um, stability wise, it's still, sometimes it crashes. Um, you just exit out, restart it again, and then usually it'll be okay. But I mean, hey, if you wanted a single player game like Gran Turismo, like the old one, buying cars at the used car dealership, slowly working your way up, um, this is the way to do it. You know, like this is, this is pretty, this is kind of awesome, I have to say. Let's see if license tests work with force feedback. And Niels Hoisingfeld, if you're watching this, if I don't get a gold medal on the braking test with your pedals, then I feel almost like, I kind of feel like I got robbed. Let's do it the Jimmy Broadman way. Bronze. Right, that's my fault. That's my fault. That was some. That was some low grade driving. Let's give it another shot. Let's give it a college effort this time. College effort. Oh, so close. So it was kind of awesome, right? Gran Turismo 5 with a Simi Cube 2 Pro and Hoisingfeld Sprint pedals in 1440p. <laughs> like, not bad, right? Force feedback, you've got gas and brake, and, you know, the, the force feedback's actually not that bad. It's actually better than Forza Horizon 5. And it's a true Gran Turismo campaign mode. So, yeah, I mean, if you're uh, if you're a little bit tired of the recent games with their super easy mode free 10 cars as soon as you start the game mode that's hyper dlc and online playing and like us on facebook to get you know a turbocharger if you want to go back to the old school sim racing games where you start out with like a, you know 20,000 credits and you've got to go buy a used car <laughs> like at the used car dealership and change the oil and work your way up slowly from like slow cars and license and no licenses and you want to work your way up Gran Turismo 5 on PC is kind of awesome um it, it does have a little bit of a stability issue every now and then it's going to crash um no big deal just you know close rpcs3 and then restart it i'm gonna leave the version of rpcs3 that i'm using um inside of the comments uh, inside of the description of the video do not ask me where to find gran turismo 5 you this is really cheap you can get a blu-ray drive on amazon and you can rip the dvd that way the blu-ray disc that way do it the right way because um, the other way you could get in trouble and, you know, I just don't condone it. I don't support it. Um, so, you know, this is very cheap. So just, you know, get the disc. Um, but yeah, I'm going to leave the versions of the software that I ran to do it. Uh, but yeah, if you get a Gimex USB dongle and connect it to your computer and you go through all the configurations that I showed you, um, it looks like it works really well. So yeah, if, if you want to try it out, Give it a shot. Let me know how it runs with your steering wheel and pedals. It should be compatible with anything, really. Uh, Sim Magic M10, um, even Fanatec stuff. It should be compatible with any of that hardware. Uh, so give it a try. Let me know how you like it.